Dear brothers and sisters of Faith in Bethany, hello and welcome to our time of worship. It's good to be in worship again, especially in these trying times. And it's good because although so much of what has happened serves as a reminder of the difficulties we are facing, worship reminds us that God is always with us. And I thank Jerry, Lori, Andrew, and Luke for helping us out in worship. Also, we lift up in our prayers the family and friends of Jack Nelson who passed away this last Sunday evening. We pray also for Jim Solhansky, who just had heart surgery. And we pass along some good news. Betty Anderson and Norman Pansky are both out of the hospital. And as of Wednesday, each are getting uh, gradually growing stronger. We begin our time of worship with a Latin dialogue. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now it is the day, day of salvation. salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine upon us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening.
For it's so often a song that enfolds us in a warm hug like those given by an old friend. Or it's a hymn that can lead us to remember again the joy and also the sorrows of our days. It's often a song of faith that helps us express the feelings that we have for our God. I've often observed as a pastor that many of our favorite hymns of the church were embedded in our lives long before, often when we were children or teenagers or young adults. And why is it? I think it's because our identity and sense of being is largely determined in those formative years, and that even more so with respect to our personal faith. It's in our formative years that our emotions are strong and there's vitality and a hope in our outlook. That's when music often seeds our deep-seated passion for life, love, and faith. Today's psalm, Psalm 98, we find the author encouraging us to continue to sing a new song in our, to the Lord. Now, singing a new song is entirely a personal experience because a new song is simply one that we've never sung before. And it's a new song that can challenge us to consider new ways of seeing God at work in this world. It was 1968, and my home church just called a new pastor, a pastor right out of seminary. His name was Harvey Troop, and early on he informed us that he wanted to be called Harvey instead of Reverend Troop. And that seemed to ruffle the feathers of a few people in our congregation who thought it was disrespectful not to put Reverend in front of that name. But this was the 1960s. And Harvey was a PK, a preacher's kid, and he wanted to do things differently. He felt it was necessary every once in a while to pluck a few feathers out of the congregation to make change happen. So within the first six months of his call, besides persuading the church to call him Harvey, he made a few more changes, three to be exact. Changes that eventually transformed our congregation. And what's interesting is all three changes came about because of music. The first thing he did is he asked our organist, Aunt Marge is what we called her, to pick up the beat of the music a little bit, to put a little swing and sway into the music. Instead of thinking, singing the favorite congregation with him, Beautiful Savior, like a funeral dirge, Harvey wanted Aunt Marge to play with it more with a little bounce, a little rock and roll. Second, Harvey asked the congregation to learn a couple of old hymns using new tunes. We started singing the Gloria Patre and doxology to those different tunes, and the congregation appreciated it. And finally, he asked the congregation to sponsor a youth choir. And he asked my mom, who was a music teacher, to, to lead that choir. And he expected to have us sing songs of the time. Again, this was the 60s, and so the songs were a little bit more rock and roll. Now you can almost imagine the initial reaction by a number of our members in the church. Pastor, we can't have that sinful sound in our church. People will leave. Pastor, if we let that kind of music into our church, before you know it, kids will come to church wearing jeans and t-shirts and tennis shoes. Pastor, I'm not sure God is going to look kindly if we have this music in our church. He's going to be shaking his head. Eventually, what that music did was transform the church. It helped the congregation see that church can be done in a number of different ways. And that it's okay to hear theologically different points of view. Now, I think it's important to understand exactly what happened in the church. Because of Harvey's three musical modifications, well, that led to more and more changes, where kids actually came to church in t-shirts and jeans and, and tennis shoes, but they came to church. My mom's choir, before the choir, before the changes, there were about six of us standing in front Three of them were my brothers and I, wearing white robes and singing Gregorian chants, it seemed like. But after the music group, there were 37 7 through 8th grade, or 7 through 12th graders standing in front of the congregation singing. And half of those uh, youth were not from our own church. 
They want to be a part of something special. But what's important for us to realize about that congregational transformation is that it all started with music. My point is that sometimes learning a new song, singing a new song, and doing it exuberantly, like it's talked about in Psalm 98, suggests that that isn't always easy. Because it involves taking the risk, opening yourself up to something new. Sometimes it's the new song that makes us see things in a new, different, faithful way. And sometimes the change changes us. When I was in seminary, I took a class on sacred music. And one of the first assignments was to read a sermon given by a 19th century Presbyterian minister from New Zealand. In the sermon, the pastor suggested that the pipe organ was the instrument of the devil. When it came time to discuss the sermon, Dr. Westermeyer told us that he gave us that sermon so that we would have a little chuckle before we got into the rest of the sacred music discussion. But then he went on to say that what he heard in that sermon is something that he was hearing today, that it's the music that's going to drive people away. It's using electric guitars and drums and numerous other instruments that people will turn away from because it's not the way we do church. Professor Rustner then went on to talk about the way music speaks to us in faith and how the new song and the new ways of singing can share God's words in ways that we never imagined before. And then he reminded us all that spreading God's word is the reason for church. So, I've got a few questions for you about music. How has music affected your faith, your theology? And maybe more importantly, how can music help you through the difficult times we're living in right now? Are you open to singing a new song that might help you see this COVID-19 world in a way that you know, allows hope to shine through? Also, as many of us have more time on our hands than we are expecting, than we were expecting, maybe this is a good time to consider how music has shaped your life and your faith. What was your favorite hymn and why is it your favorite? And how does music, music help you to build your love God, uh, for God and God's name, uh, love your neighbor. What I'd like you to do is take some time so we can think about those questions. And if you're so moved, jot down a few th uh, thoughts and e email those thoughts to me. Or give me a call and let's talk about music in the church. But remember as well to continue to sing to the Lord in song, for he has done marvelous things.
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God remembers in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days.